All right. Yeah, a little, a little something, something a little different today. Yeah. What I got here is a basket, and this basket hangs on a bicycle, and uh, has his has his bucket. I got two buckets because it's it's for two bicycles. But anyway, yeah. Uh, and this uh, this bucket's all rotted out. It's actually a flower basket. You know, you fill this thing with dirt and put flowers in it, and uh, you know this actually sits inside here like that so a friend of mine gave this to me to fix and uh, I'm looking at it and it's pretty interesting I'm looking at it and I'm thinking this thing got to be from the the 40s or 50s just by looking at it and the way it's built and designed you know because each one of these bars is welded in individually it looks like it was welded by hand and I'm thinking, you know, maybe 40s, 50s, and then I'm looking at it, and I see a little, you see right here? Let me see if I can get here sort of focus in. You see this little thing here? It looks like it was from a MIG welder. So I don't think they perfected MIG welding commercially until maybe uh, the late 50s, so... I had a change of heart, and I think this this might be from probably the early 60s or something. But it's pretty interesting how well it's made. At first, I even thought that, that it felt like it had a plastic coating on it, you know, like it was plastic dipped. But it's not. It's actually paint. And uh, it's probably lead paint. That's why it, it you know, thick lead paint. That's why it uh, sort of feels thick, and you can tell it was never primed. And uh, these things held up pretty good because... These are for a bicycle that lives down the shore, right on a bay, so it's exposed to salt its whole life, practically. So, and like I say, it looks like it was hand welded, right? Look at this, this one piece here, look at the weld on that. That little, it's better if I come down like this. Yeah, see that big blob of weld? That little piece ain't going anywhere. But uh, it's pretty interesting. Anybody knows anything about these, let me know. You know, like if you, you remember from your childhood or something. And uh, maybe give me a little history on it. But it's a, a flower basket for a bicycle. So i got to fix this. And it's going to make a couple old ladies real happy. At first I was just going to patch this up with cardboard. And then uh, fiberglass cloth it, you know. So that would, that would reinforce it and make it better than it ever was. And it would also waterproof it, so it wouldn't wouldn't rot away again. And then, you know, whatever whatever was inside, just let it rot out. But then I said, you know, it'd be a lot easier and a lot cheaper for me to just uh, make it out of metal, make it out of thick metal, thicker metal. This metal here, in the best best spots, it feels like it might be 22, 20, 24 gauge. And uh, I'm gonna make it out of 16. I got a piece of this laying around, so. Yeah, I wasn't going to, initially I wasn't going to uh, film this, but I figured what the heck. Somebody might be interested in it. So, uh, oh yeah, another thing I wanted to say is, uh, the way this was put together, each, each piece is seamed together, you know, it's not like a formed piece. You see, each piece is individual. And it's folded over there, and I guess it's uh, sort of crimp welded. And even the back here, you know, you think it, you think they would have made it out of just two pieces of metal, but they didn't. There's actually one, two, three pieces. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the back here, this shape here, and continue around here, and just bend it in the middle. So I have this piece, and then. Uh, this piece here, you know, it looks looks pretty simple, but it's actually pretty uh, uh, complex for for a little basket, you know, because it, it it sits and it's and it's on an angle. It sits on an angle, and the hole up top here is wider than the bottom, so it's not like it's just a, you know, you you just uh, square everything up, so. It'll, uh, it's going to take a little thinking, so uh, 
you say we quit talking and uh, put some metal up here, maybe uh, some cardboard to make some templates. I have a cardboard box here, cereal actually, cereal box, and uh, right here we got the seam, you know, the, the side of the seam here, Cheerios, what are they, uh, apple cinnamon Cheerios, and uh, I'm going to put that right here, line that up right here, let me get my glasses so I can see, where do you go, oh here you go, I got them, I got them. Just make a template of this. Hmm. Then I'll come down here. Is this the better one? Actually, actually, this one's better. It's got more, a little more uh, front, front left on it. So, uh, try to get my head in the way. Huh, you see something here. One's actually wider than the other, so. It is, uh, nothing critical about this. This is uh, going to be rude and crude. or one piece. Alright, we've got our one piece there. I'll cut that out and then we'll uh, sort of make the sides there. Alright, yeah, cut that out. And there's our uh, back and bottom. Now, i just put this here. Make a few marks. Didn't even do any measuring, just to uh... There we go, can you see that? Alright, yeah, let me cut that out. Alright, yeah, that looked like it would be easy, you know? If you could take a piece of cardboard, the same thickness as that, put it on there and wrap it around, but it don't work that way, you know? Because this, this is sort of a complex curve here. You know, so what I did, see why that wouldn't, that won't work. I mean, it, it would probably work for what we need it for. I mean, it's only a, a dirt basket, right? But uh, might as well do it. Might as well make one the same way it's supposed to be made. So, so I made a piece of wider cardboard here, and I'm going to wrap it around and mark it. And even on the top here, the top's got to get cut. Same with this side. That's why you make them out of cardboard first. Imagine bending a piece of metal and finding out it don't fit. Okay, now the bottom here. The bottom here is going to be a little tricky because of half it's missing. Yeah, it was going to be clear sailing. Okay. Put the straight edge there. Oh, no, you know, that ain't going to work either. Hmm. Okay. We'll figure that out and then cut this. Yeah, it's sort of like a, a, a bow. Interesting. Road King didn't see that coming. All right, let me cut this out and uh, I'll show you what we got. All right. Yeah, we got it uh, pretty much dead nuts on now. How many of you guys knew that was going to happen? You're laughing at me. How many guys are laughing at me? Go ahead, tell me. Yeah, I think we'll be okay now. Now we just got to throw it and uh, lay it down onto the just the metal, the sheet metal. 
There you go. General Mills, if you're watching, uh, send me a few cases of this for this uh, free advertising. All right, let's take this apart and uh, make some uh, make some metal. All right, yeah, we got the patterns laid out on a piece of metal here. I'm gonna cut it out with a jigsaw, just a rough cut, you know, out around here and around here, and then uh, take it over to the bandsaw and try and fine tune it. All right. We got them shaped pretty much uh, where we want them now, all of them. And I marked uh, these pieces out here where I'm going to make the bend. I have a break, but I'm gonna uh, I'm not going to take it out. It's, uh, it's tucked way under the bench. I think I'm just going to stick these in the vise because these are just a little bigger than the vise, and then I'm just going to bend it and and beat them into submission. And I'll, I'll beat on this section here because this is uh, it's going to be the bottom. You're not going to see that, but. Uh, it should be okay. You shouldn't see any dents or anything because the beating's going to be all down along the line. So, all right, we're going to bring you over here. I'll set you up and uh, we'll put you in a voice. All right, I'll try and stay out of your way. Yeah, a lot of people guy. A lot of people say you shouldn't uh, hammer on a voice and stuff, but uh, these voices are made to hammer on. This one here is about uh, 175 pounds. Another thing they say is don't hit on a hammer. I want to hit a hand with a hammer. I've been doing that for 40 years and it, uh, right, that's just where we want. Alright, let me get my headphones going. You don't want to be listening to that. Alright, you got your hearing protection on? Yeah, we just want to make this a 90. close enough. Let's take it off and take a look at it. Uh, yeah, that was pretty close. You see, we missed it. Missed it by about a 64th. I don't know if you can see that. So that's pretty good. Alright, I'm going to bend the other one and then we'll, uh, I don't know how we're going to bend that other one. We've got to find something, something about 8 inches and bend it around it, wrap it around it. 
Right. All right. Yeah, before we go any further, I wanted to check for uh, size here, and uh, it fits pretty good. Got plenty of room on the bottom, because that's, that's just the way they had it. You know, they had more bottom on the top. And uh, I got room on the top there, so I can actually put that this piece on the outside. So that one fits nice. And that one fits nice. And uh, you see the, the paint can here? Paint can is about a quarter inch smaller than the bottom radius here. So I can uh, I can use a can to try and uh, shape that, and then. I thought I had it upside down. No. And then when I put it on here, I can actually see how I can turn it so you can see it. Yeah, I can I can put that on there and then maybe I could just tack it and walk it around. Of course it'll be it'll be a lot closer to this shape, so it'll be a lot easier to do that, but uh, you know, it's gonna be tough because like I say the, the top top is way wider than the bottom but uh, we'll figure it out all right I think I'm gonna call it a day I'm pretty whooped so uh, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow all right yeah, check this out I found something that's just about the same radius as a paint can look at that almost perfect so maybe I can lean on that and, and shape it a little bit on there Paint can's not all that strong. Alright, it's the next day, and uh, we've been doing a little bending on this, and uh, we're happy with the way it turned out. You see the top arc is, is a lot wider than the bottom, and that's exactly what we want. And uh, I got it pretty close the way it is. Over here you see there's a little bit of space, but... Uh, let me show you. I'll, let me put you in a tripod and I'll show you what we're going to do there. Okay. What the plans are is I'm going to tack. I'm going to start tacking on this side. Right there. And then just. It's pretty good. It's pretty good all the way around. I got a little space here, but that's okay. I can, I can fix that. I can, weld, I can weld that gap. Actually, it's not going to be that big. It's just going to be that big right there. Which ain't bad at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to tack it all the way around. Then when we get around to here, you see, we're going to have enough flex in this, you know, that I can make it perfect. And then the, the top, there's a little gap in the top there. But then once everything's done on the bottom, then you then you can pull the top in, and that'll bow to. That'll bow that out even more. So that's going to work out real good. I'm pleased with that. So uh, that one, that one's ready. I'll uh, I'll go over to the vise and I'll show you how we bent this without uh, without putting any creases in there or nothing, without using shrinkers and all that stuff. So all right, I'll meet you over at the vise. All right, what we're doing first is we're only going to work the bottom edge. We're not going to worry about the top at all because. Uh, the bottom is a much tighter curve and the top will follow but uh, what you do is I've got a radius here and you're just gonna work it ever so slightly and like I say we're just gonna keep working the edge <clears throat> So you're starting to get a little bend out of it. Then what I do is let me tighten this up a little bit. There we go. And you're gonna try and keep this straight here like that, you know, work that. But what I did is just ever so slightly. I know, I know my voice is it's over a hundred years old, so it's a little loose. It works though. And I'm just going to keep working that edge ever so slightly. <clears throat> you 
You can do it like this. Little by little, and you're not you're not denting this yet, so it all looks good, and we're we're actually getting a pretty good bend out of it already. So like I say, you keep working that. And that looks pretty good. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go down. We're going to work it on our knee. Come on down here with us. All right. Now you're just going to come down here and work it right over your leg. A pretty tough piece of metal to be doing this with it, but uh, it works. So. So then when you, when you get a little better shape that you want, you see it's, it's getting there. Then I'll show you what we do. Come on back to the vise. Alright, now I got a, a piece of a hunk of uh, 5 inch uh, aluminium there. Uh, tied down in a vise. And then you just take a rubber mallet. Look at that mallet there, man. You got some good use out of that, buddy. And then uh, just work it. it until you get it to where you can't bend it anymore by hand. Mind your way, I'm trying not to be in your way. See now this turn is pretty tight. So that's where you're gonna need the mallet a little bit. You don't have to go, you see I don't got no room inside the voice here so I gotta go in between and use this edge. But that's okay. You can turn it around and do it like this. But anyway, you just work it, but you keep working the inside edge. So let me, uh, let me work this a little more. And then uh, we'll get back to you. I don't want to waste too much of your time. I don't want this video to be too long. All right, here we finish this one. Yeah, we're happy with this one. Uh, this one came out real nice, and it took about half the time the other one did. And uh, we hit this one about dead nuts on. Look at that. See both corners are uh, touching. And out here, you just barely see a little lip. So like I say, we'll, we'll start over here, start tacking it, and work our way around. And uh, we should be okay. So uh, let's uh, get the welder out and set it up. All right. Yeah, we tacked it together, and uh, we're tickled silly. Look at this corner here. This matched up perfect, man. That was dead nuts on here. And then the bottom. The bottom's pretty good. All the way around. Over here, we've got a little space, but uh, nothing you can't fill in with weld. And it uh, doesn't hang over or nothing. It's like a perfect fit. So, now, you got to test, test fit it, right? Let me drop it in there. There we go. Look at this. Went in like it had eyes. So uh, we're happy with that. Got to cut on a little lip. All right. Yeah. So that, that one fits perfect. We're happy with that. So we're going to weld that up 100% and then grind it down and make it look good. But uh, we're happy. All right. Yeah, we tacked the other one together, and uh, we're happy with that. Got a little bit of a gap right there, but uh, nothing nothing you can't uh, spam with the welder. And then even on the side here. But that's, you know, that's fabrication for you. This side, we hit dead nuts on. So, uh, we finished welding this one up. This one here is all welded up. I mean, they're not the prettiest welds. That's probably got a little dirt bike for. And there's not much grinding, but uh, we're happy with it. So, uh let me weld this one up, and then we'll uh, grind them up and make them look good. All right. Yeah, they cleaned up nice. Uh, what I'm going to do now is 
I'm going to get the file and uh, file the top here, round off the, the edges. I don't know, maybe I'll get a, a small grinding wheel, you know, with a, like a 120 grit on here or something. I don't know, whatever I do, I gotta get around this off. We don't need uh, some old lady slitting her wrist on here, right? Alright, and then what I'm gonna do is uh, DA the whole thing because uh, I'm gonna encapsulate these in uh, clear epoxy. That way they're waterproof and weatherproof and they'll uh, outlast all of us. Alright, let me uh, round this off and we'll get back to you. Alright, you know, we filed down all the edges on here and everything, so uh, that's nice and smooth. But I did want to uh, blow a few holes in here for drainage. It doesn't have to be perfect, but... Uh, In case they want to plug them up for some reason. Alright, let's uh, take it off of there and deburr it. Yeah, for deburring it, I just got this, uh, it's just an oversized drill. It looks like uh, I want to say uh, three quarters, but it's probably not. Maybe five eighths. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, Rotate made that about uh, 45 years ago. It was an apprentice tool and die maker. And just put it in there and twist it and get some burrs right off. Inside's a little worse. Inside, look at them. That tear you up. We ain't going to have no old lady ripping her finger to pieces. Not on my watch, it ain't gonna happen. Alright, let me clean this up. Alright, yeah, we cleaned these up real good and then uh, sanded them down with the DA, some 80 grit. That'll give our epoxy gel something to stick to. I meant to sand these pieces before I even welded them together. That way it would, uh, it would have been easier, you know, to, uh, to sand the inside, but I did it by hand, so it took like an extra half hour. So, uh, I'm going to go in and have some uh, dinner, and then uh, maybe we'll come back later tonight, you know, about 11 o'clock or so, and uh, give them a coat of epoxy gel. All right, we'll see you then. All right, we got these all uh, cleaned up and uh, cleaned them down with lacquer thinner and stuff like that, and I'm ready to mix up my epoxy resin here. I think I, uh, I probably mixed up uh, a little too much, but uh, hey, what are you going to do, right? All right, let me uh, let me lube these up and then uh, we'll show you what they look like before we leave them overnight. All right, yeah, we juiced them all up and uh, all we gotta do is just let them sit and uh, harden up and see what they look like tomorrow. I wiped out all the excess that was in the bottom because it's you know it's designed to flow out. You know, it's all that's where it all goes. So, all right, let's just. Uh, Harden up and then uh, we'll check it out tomorrow and then paint it up. Alright, see you guys later. Alright, it's yes, the next day and uh, this is all cured. Got a nice uh, thick coat on the bottom there. Well, that's nice. But uh, I think I'm going to uh, let this cure for another day because it's too windy outside. We're getting 65 mile an hour gusts. I haven't seen that in years. So, uh, we're going to let these cure another day, and then uh, we'll uh, sand them, scuff them up a little bit, and uh, paint them. All right, we'll see you then. All right, it's about four days later. I just got done scuffing these all up, so uh, let's take them outside and paint them. It's about uh, 65, 70 degrees out, so it should be okay. All right, yeah, it's been a few days, and uh, I put a top coat on them. They're all dry now, and uh, I'm happy with them. They came out pretty good. All right, here's the before. We'll rot it out. Here's the after. Let's uh, see what it looks like side by side here. Pretty good. All right. Yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging in. I didn't expect it to be this long, this video, but 
I appreciate you hanging in and uh, uh, hopefully uh, maybe somebody learned something. You know, I know I did. I learned a little something about compound curbs, fabricating them. Yeah, I wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting the way that compound curve uh, came out, but uh, it came out well. All right, <clears throat> what do you guys say? Enough of this? All right, see you later.